Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to episode number four of Watch and Learn. And today we're going to be discussing two different types of watch movements, mainly your automatics, your hand winds, uh, and your quartz or battery operated watches. In episode number three, we covered watch jewels and rubies. Uh, it might be a good idea to watch that one since I went over a lot of stuff. Uh, maybe that's almost like uh, a prerequisite to this, uh, to this episode. Uh, but that was a good episode that discussed uh, how we reduce friction in watches. And now today we're going to discuss, again, just two basic types of movements. Your, your automatics, you know, your mechanical uh, self-windings, if you will. Uh, whether they're automatic or not makes no difference. And your quartz watch is battery operated. Now there's more than this, obviously, in the watch world. There's uh, solar, kinetic, mecha quartz. And then you can get it in different types of movements, chronographs, GMTs, alarms, regulators, etc., etc. Uh, but we're just going to focus on these two for now because I think it's going to be enough to talk about. And maybe in the future uh, we can uh, bring in uh, some other movements and talk about uh, s some other different watch functions. Automatic watches or mechanical watches, you know, are what, you know, primarily what, what we sell, what we focus on. But of course, you know, there's many, many different kinds of watches out there. Uh, almost all of them, though, do fall into the realm of either an auto or a quartz. So when I started thinking about this video and how I was going to approach it, you know, I started saying, well, every watch, pretty much, even clocks, keep track of time by measuring something. And then when it reaches a certain number, you know, that's a second or that's a minute or that's an hour. You know, something that regularly uh, oscillates, something that can be uh, counted. Now, the only exception that I could think of actually was a, a sundial, which obviously just uses the, the shadow of something. Uh, but, you know, whether it be a, a water clock from a thousand years ago, a grandfather clock with a pendulum, a desk clock, a watch, quartz, an atomic clock, they all count something. So I thought that was a good way to start the video off. So in my hand is, this is a swatch. Actually, both of these are swatches. They're both mine. Uh, I just thought they're, they're an interesting di uh, dichotomy. You know, an automatic swatch and a quartz swatch. Uh, both skeletons. Uh, the one in my right hand does not work anymore. It's all corroded. That's why the center of it is a little bit fuzzy. Um, the one on the left is far older, and it still functions perfectly. It's a sealed, uh, a sealed automatic. It's non-serviceable. Uh, but anyway, so like I covered in the uh, in the in watch and learn number three, you know, we discussed the, the various elements of a watch. Uh, so in an automatic mechanical, what what have you? It doesn't matter. The only thing an automatic adds is you know a, a, a rotor that winds the mainspring. It keeps a beat by this balance wheel that's oscillating back and forth at the top. As this wheel moves back and forth, it is regularly allowing and disallowing this wheel right here, the escape wheel, uh, to move and stop. And that results in this, you know, what we call, a lot of people say it's a smooth moving uh, second hand, but it's not really smooth. It's actually moving about eight times a second, sometimes six times a second, depending on the beat of the movement. So it's starting and stopping, and that's how uh, it's keeping time going around the dial. The minute hand is geared to this. So the minute hand moves 1 60th as fast as this, as the seconds hand. And then the hour hand moves 1 60th as fast as the minute hand. So everything is really, you know, this is, this is the timer. That is the thing that is being counted in mechanical sense to indicate the passing of time. So what is a balance? I have one here uh, from Watch and Learn number 3. I'm going to pick it up. and It's a coiled up spring. And then on the bottom of it is this uh, balance bridge. But the balance itself is, again, this is garbage, so don't worry about it. The balance is really just a wheel. Let me bring this out so the camera can focus on it. It's just a wheel. It's got a jewel in the center. Uh, and it rotates back and forth really fast, you know, based on uh, this spring. And so this wheel will oscillate back and forth like this, just like you saw on the watch. And it does it eight times a second, as I said, six times a second. Uh, depending on the beat of the movement. Now you'll hear movements referred to as 28,000 uh, beats per hour. Uh, 28,800 beats per hour or 36,000 beats per hour. And when you correlate that down into seconds, all that is, is telling you how many times it's moving per second. Now, it would be easier if they just, you know, did what the whole world does and just 
base everything on hertz. So, you know, an 8 hertz wheel would be 28,800 uh, beats per hour. A 10 hertz, like the Zenith El Primero, 36,000 beats per hour, it, it oscillates 10 times a second. Uh, but that, you know, the, the, the theory there is the faster the wheel moves, or the faster it oscillates, uh, any tiny changes between periods of oscillation will be averaged out in the long run, and the watch will, you know, will be uh, more and more accurate the faster the beat goes. It's not always the case, but it's the general theory behind it. Uh, so, you know, more accurate timepieces or clocks, the, the beat does go faster and faster up to, you know, atomic clocks where the beat is extremely fast. So the heart of the watch is the balance wheel, and that's what's going to, you know, keep most of the accuracy. Of course, there's friction like we discussed in the Joule video. There's the way it's geared. Uh, there's a lot of other factors, but imagine if you could, you know, ensure that this balance surely does go back and forth eight times every second, guaranteed, then you will have a, more or less a perfect watch, you know, you know not regarding friction. Uh, but we don't have that. We have manufacturing uh, inconsistencies, tolerances, difference in positional accuracy. If I hold it like this, versus holding it like this, gravity is acting differently on the balance wheel. So things will change and the wheel will not always rotate, uh, oscillate with the same frequency. One way that uh, watchmakers get around this, and this is a cufflink of mine, an old movement, but it illustrates something. This is the non-functioning, of course. But if you look at the balance, you'll see these little nubs sticking out from the side. Uh, they're screws and higher end watches extremely you know, high-end watches will have screwed balances. I actually was looking, and none of my watches have screwed balances, uh, even my nicest pieces. Uh, so with a screwed balance, a watchmaker can actually come in and loosen and tighten these screws, and what they're basically doing is changing the inertia of the wheel and getting it to uh, rotate with a regular uh, frequency oscillation. So that's how your automatic watches work. Then... In the 60s, I'm going to bring up something I didn't have on screen before. Bulova came along, and they came out with the Accutron, the tuning fork watch. So a lot of you may have owned these. Oops, it's upside down. A lot of you may have owned these, may have seen these. Uh, this is the precursor to quartz. You know, quartz really was first invented, uh, excuse me, quartz wristwatches, the movements were first invented, uh, 69, 70. They really didn't come into being until, you know, 70s and 80s. Uh, but before that, there was the Accutron. And this is actually a tuning fork. It's a tuning fork watch. And if I hold it really close to the mic, I don't know if you can hear it. I'm, I won't know until I'm done editing. But it is emitting around a 360 hertz pitch. The tuning fork is here. If you look at the metal parts, I'm going to trace it with my tweezers. Comes down, across, back up, and then over this magnet. And the Accutron works by exciting these magnets and getting this, this tuning fork to resonate around 360 hertz. So remember before when we were talking about these balances, we were talking about you know, eight times a second, ten times a second, six times a second. Now we're up to 360 times a second. That's a lot of beats. So it gives a very smooth moving uh, needle, uh, seconds hand. And of course, this is before most integrated circuitry was uh, developed. So it's all discrete components. I mean, this is just a really cool watch. This is one of mine. I bought this years ago. They are not expensive, a couple hundred bucks. If you like, you know, I, obviously I love engineering and watchmaking. This is just really cool. I don't wear it much. Just a cool watch to have. Uh, it's got discrete components. You know, you can see the wiring, the soldering. You know, oh, old world craftsmanship, I guess. Uh, just really cool before they put everything on a chip and killed everything mechanical in the world. Battery is very easily replaceable because the batteries on these do not last long, 12 to 18 months. Uh, something interesting to note, not really related to the video, uh, if you have an Accutron or thinking of getting one, they work on 1.3 volts as opposed to the common silver oxide batteries that we use today, that, which is about 1.5 volts. Uh, when these came out, mercury batteries were popular, or they were the button batteries, uh, and, and their chemistry put out 1.3 volts, and now we've got silver oxide batteries, they put out 1.5 volts. 
And of course, we can't use uh, mercury anymore, I dispose of it. So, silver oxide batteries have too high of a voltage. So, they still make batteries for this watch. They're actually silver oxide chemistry, and there's a diode uh, that's stuck to the battery, and it lowers its voltage to 1.3 volts. Because if you put a 1.5 voltage volt battery in here, it has it can run fast. It doesn't have to. It depends on the tuning fork is designed. But it has a tendency to either run fast or you'll just uh, you know you'll ruin some of the circuitry because it's not built to handle that. This is in between the mechanical watch and the quartz watch. So then I'm going to bring up the quartzy. So now all quartz watches pretty much you know run the same. You know, use the same principles. So they have a battery, which is down here. Now, of course, uh, on the watch I showed you before, the automatic, the power, the power source was this spring that's all wound up in here. You can see it. I'm going to move a bit. You can see that spring wound up. That's the main spring. That's what holds the power. So now in a quartz watch, the battery obviously holds the power. Uh, you have this little can up here. This component is the quartz oscillator. So really when we say it's a battery watch, you really have to say it's a quartz driven watch because this is what keeps the beat or keeps the pace up, uh, for the watch. And then there's almost always a coil somewhere and that coil is what drives the motor uh, to turn the wheels. So again, it's all the same thing. Uh, the battery drives the quartz. There's logic to count the oscillations and it, it, will, it will index the second hand once a second. So now, how does what is quartz? So quartz is a you know a very ab an abundant mineral found uh, second most abundant mineral found in uh, on Earth, and scientists discovered long ago that quartz is piezoelectric. If you take a piece of quartz and you bend it, uh, it generates uh, a voltage potential across its planes. So because that happens, the inverse is also true. If you apply a voltage to quartz, uh, it will move. Uh, it will oscillate. So inside this little can, believe it or not, is actually a tuning fork cut from a quartz crystal. Uh, it's very small, and it's got little electrodes on its on the tines of the fork, and it uses battery power to excite those tines and to get the quartz crystal to oscillate at its resonant frequency. And being electrical engineers, or uh, engineers pick uh, things in powers of two usually, so two to the power of fifteen is the frequency oscillation of a quartz crystal in a watch around I think it's 32,768 Hertz so remember about 10 Hertz 360 Hertz 32,000 Hertz So now we're measuring oscillations in th up to 32,000 a little computer counts the oscillation of the tuning fork after it hits 30 after it overflows 2 to the 15 buckets one little bit pops out and we know that the stepper motor has to go one second. And this watch has no seconds hand, but that doesn't really make a difference. The second hand is tied to the minute hand, is tied to the hour hand. And even though this watch doesn't work, I can still change the time. And it's all, if you can see through the plastic, it's all geared. So you, you would say on a watch like this, the balance wheel is now replaced by the quartz oscillator. So it's kind of, you know, they're all, they all kind of run on the same basic premise. Except, you know, we just, the, the, the players change a bit, right? So quartz watches are in, inherently much more accurate than automatics. I'm going to, you know, not talk about the uh, Accutron anymore. That was kind of just a stepping stone. So now we're in 70s, 80s technology, and not much has changed really in the quartz realm, or quartz, writ, quartz, quartz wristwatch realm. Uh... Accuracy of a standard, you know, automatic watch nowadays, plus 25 seconds, minus 15 seconds a day. Accuracy of a standard, you know, unjeweled, unadjusted quartz watch, roughly 15 seconds a month. Uh, again, rough estimates, depends how good the movement is. I guess the movement really is a piece of garbage. You're probably going to get worse than that. But, you know, 15 seconds a month, a second every two days or so. So, obviously, you know, these are much more accurate, but that's not why people own these automatics we like them because of what they represent and what's inside so let's talk about accuracy a little more in that 
chronometer. So you may have heard the term uh, certified chronometer. Uh, COSC is a company in Switzerland that certifies uh, watch movements to chronometer status. Chronometer status, you know, encompasses many things, temperature variation, variations between positions. Uh, but the biggest thing that people usually take out of chronometer status is that the accuracy is plus six seconds down to minus four, six sec minus four seconds a day. So the watch can be plus six to minus four a day, and then it, it's a certified chronometer. Again, in various positions, various temperatures. Uh, and also, you know, Mac, there's different deviations uh, between positionals. Uh, but anyway, that is what a chronometer is. Obviously, a quartz watch beats that extremely easily just in its base state. So you, there are no certified, you know, you don't certify a quartz watch to the same chronometer specification. Uh, but there is a quartz COSC certificate. Very few watches ever get them. It's really not necessary, uh, especially in the days of satellite navigation. Everyone has GPS, which is uh, the most accurate form of, you know, clocks that any of us can really have. Uh, but COSC quartz watches are plus or minus 0.07 seconds a day, roughly 25 seconds a year, uh, which is obviously, you know, phenomenal accuracy. So then with quartz watches, of course, then you can really upgrade the movement. They can add joules to the movement to lower the friction, make it more accurate. Uh, they can put in thermal compensated movements. Uh, Seiko has these, Breitling has these, make the watch more accurate. It is interesting to note that quartz watches are more or less tuned to run on your wrist because as temperature changes, excuse me, as temperature changes, the accuracy of the watch does drift. Uh, so they're kind of tuned to more or less be around the temperature of your wrist, uh, excuse me, temperature of it while it's on your wrist rather than being off uh, on the dresser. The last thing I want to discuss about quartz watches is uh, just something you, you may not think about. When you use a battery-powered flashlight, say, you know, as, as time goes on, the batteries, as the battery fades, the, the strength of the uh, light obviously dims. But with a quartz watch, you couldn't have that. Let's say the Let's say the battery went down by 5%. If you lost 5% of your timekeeping, think about how much that would be. Uh, and it, what, an, hour, an hour a day it would be off. So the interesting thing about quartz is that, you know, we discussed before it's piezoelectric, uh, but when you apply uh, voltage to it and it oscillates, it actually stays in the same frequency of oscillation over a decent range of well, button battery voltage is one and a half volt, you know, plus or minus ten percent. The oscillation doesn't change much. So what that means, you know, this again, this little crystal that's up here, that's inside this uh, component can. Uh, as the voltage changes, the accuracy of the watch does not drift. Which is why some people say, "Oh, you know, my watch battery died. Uh, I didn't know it. It wasn't even going slow. It won't go slow. It basically just dies because eventually, uh, the little motor, powered by the coil, just can't." generate enough power anymore to, to turn the seconds hand. Uh, the quartz can still count, but the rest of the system has just more or less broken down. Uh, but it's just a, it's a happy coincidence and maybe a planned, a planned coincidence that, you know, quartz works like that or else, you know, your watch would be accurate for the first day and then as the voltage drifted percent by percent, uh, your watch would become extremely inaccurate, which is not good for a watch. So again, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com discussing the difference between uh, mechanical movements and quartz movements with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it came out to be a little bit long, uh, and that's why I didn't discuss uh, <laughs> hybrids uh, such as uh, solars, mecha quartz, uh, kinetics, etc. That'll be another video. If you like this video, please do like it. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so at this time. If you have any questions or comments or you want to add any other little tidbits of information in the comment section, please do. You know, in, in uh, preparing for this video, I found a ton of information. Um, I'll say I, I did know most of it, but some of the things really uh, caught me by surprise. Uh, technology is amazing and the things we take for granted, uh, we simply shouldn't. Try to appreciate them and, and understand them a bit. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.